Minister Peter Bata calls for action on crime. ICC makes changes to World Cup format. And sharing the Christmas spirit in mid-air. This is the National MTV News with Lorraine Gabina. Good evening and thank you for joining me on this Christmas Eve. A prominent Medang resident and tourist operator has repeated calls for community action on crime and for government to encourage tourists to go to locations outside of tourism hubs. Owner of the Medang Resort, Sir Peter Bata, points out that tourism numbers have declined up to 30% over 10 years due to various factors, including crime and airline delays. The drop in numbers has not only affected Medang, but East Sepik as well, where tourists used to flock to every year. Medang is arguably one of the most beautiful locations in Papua New Guinea, with tourism facilities developed over a period of 30 years. From the 1990s until the mid-2000s, tourism numbers were at an all-time high with well-traveled visitors writing important and widely published reviews of Medang as an important tourist and cultural hub. But over the last 10 years, tourist operators saw a steady decline in tourist numbers. Sir Peter Butter, who has been the face of tourism over two decades, says a number of factors contributed to that decline. Those factors include the deterioration of infrastructure and flight delays. And at the time we were having uh, extreme difficulties with Air New Guinea. They were unable to operate their schedules. There were too many council flights. And when you're in the tourist operation business, uh, you're open for litigation. And uh, on occasions we had tourists stranded in Moresby and tourists stranded here. Uh, we didn't know whether to let the ship go with a few passengers and wait for the rest to come the following day or uh, hold it back and be sued by the people on the ship. It became Sir Peter good. owns and operates the Medang Resort Hotel and while it is still considered a primary location for tourist accommodation, it doesn't get the numbers it used to in previous years. The decline of tourism in Medang has not only affected this town, it has also affected communities along the Sepik River where incomes generated by the once vibrant tourism industry have diminished. Outside of Medang, the government has created tourism hubs in the Milimbe province and the New Guinea Islands, the impacts of which the government hopes will trickle down to other provinces. I believe it was a, a totally wrong decision to create these tourist hubs. Mm -hmm. I think that um, tourist hubs may make economical sense, but the reality is that a tourist will want to go to where the facilities and services are. And we have the, the services and facilities in Medang, and yet we've been left out of that, uh, got like the triangle, whatever it's called, tourist hubs. And I don't think it's up to the government to dictate to where a tourist goes. I think it's up to the, the, the townships themselves to be able to identify themselves, to have good products. One of the primary causes for the decline in tourist numbers has been the increasing rate of crime and ethnic tension. Between 2015 and 2016, there were at least six reported major clashes between groups of settlers in Medang. Police numbers have remained low, with police not having resources to adequately contain instances of violence without requesting for reinforcements. Scott Waide, National MTV News, Medang. A businessman in Kimbe is also calling on the West New Britain provincial government to support its tourism industry. While more focus is on oil palm, businessman Jacob Gavuli says tourism is another sector that has to be developed. This is because tourism is renewable and sustainable. Situated close to Kimbe town is Tavur Lodge, a family project initiated under the small to medium enterprise sector. The Lodge is a new business in the West New Britain capital, hoping to support and develop the tourism sector in the province. But directors Jacob Gavuli and Patrick Tega want the West New Britain provincial government to put more emphasis in supporting small businesses grow to attract tourists. They say tourism in West New Britain has remained untapped and if exploited, this will become one of the largest revenue generators for the province. 
Recently, the Tower of Lords opened its new wing consisting of a restaurant and bar. The opening of the new wing coincided with the hype of Christmas celebrations. The Lords employs 25 locals and plans to extend similar lodging businesses in Biela town. Meanwhile, the West New Britain provincial government told MTV's Stock Picks a program one of its recent decisions will be the need to introduce tourism as a priority focus apart from palm oil. Jack LaPava, Jr., National MTV News. The Secretary for Personnel Management, John Carley, will seek the court's interpretation on the registration of the Health Support Workers Union. In the meantime, the Health Support Workers have been banned from taking any industrial action or strike. Fabian Hakalitz has more. The Industrial Tribunal Chairperson has summoned parties of the Health Support Workers Union to appear before her and ordered them not to go on strike. In the meantime, we will wait and see where, what the courts say about their registration and if they got, direct us to re resume negotiations. Secretary Kali Ailey strongly protested against the registration of the Health Support Workers Union, saying there was no need for a separate union. This is because these members are already benefiting from industrial awards negotiated by the Public Employees Association. Uh, and some of the other health support workers were already members of nurses. Some were members of the Medical Rab Laboratory Technicians uh, Union. Uh, and some were also members of other unions in the health sector. Uh, and so it would cause some uh, difficulties in, in managing uh, uh, this uh, group of uh, people. Mr. Kali says he disputed the secret ballot conducted by the health support workers. This is because there was no industrial dispute. Because we never negotiated or there were never failures any negotiations because we never met. Uh, purely because the log of claims that they gave to me were the log of claims they developed well before they became a registered industrial organization. So based on that, I did not recognize the log of claims which were saved on me because they were from a group of people who were working on forming a union. Uh, and if they had saved the log of claims after, they, after their alleged registration, then I would have uh, accepted that. Fabian Hacklitz, National MTV News. Meanwhile, the Secretary says the Public Service Ministry will continue to support the Bougainville Public Service Machinery to be sustainable. This is to ensure that capacity is manageable that will prepare Papua New Guinea's autonomous region for its referendum. Since the public service powers were transferred from Waigani to the autonomous Bougainville government, much has been achieved in the last two years. Personal Management Department Secretary John Kali says they will work together to move Bougainville forward. Uh, we've established, helped them to uh, create the departments. We've helped them to, uh, in the process of appointing people in those uh, public service departments. Because I believe the public service in any uh, country is important to the stability uh, and to uh, building and develop in uh, that country. For autonomy to be truly meaningful, it was necessary for the public service powers to be transferred from the national to the autonomous Bougainville governments. These are implemented under the Memorandum of Understanding through the Joint Supervisory Body. And that outlines, the Memorandum of uh, outlines the processes uh, and the manner and the, mechanic, the, the mechanism under which all the outstanding national powers are to be drawn down uh, to the autonomous region of Bougainville and its government. The appointment of another chief secretary and departmental heads will help with capacity development of the Bougainville Public Service, preparing it for referendum. Drawn down powers uh, are given to the right people and the right structures on the island. But that public service is important as we work towards our referendum. Fabian Hakalitz, National MTV News. 
Fifty fishermen from Vietnam were arrested for illegal fishing in the southern waters of Papua New Guinea. The illegal fishermen were in three fishing vessels when they were spotted by PNGDF naval officers on board HMPNGS Seadla. PNGDF Colonel Ezekia Wenzel told MTV News one of the three fishing vessels was destroyed yesterday. The 50 fishermen will be brought into Alotau by this evening to be properly charged. The arrest was conducted with assistance from the Australian Border Command. Fishing vessels that illegally uh, come into Papua New Guinea territorial waters, um, we have arrested two and one has been destroyed. And the message is loud and clear to any one collaborating or any illegal uh, fishing vessels that comes into our territorial waters, uh, ships or boats will be destroyed if necessary. National Fisheries Authority at this stage have, have not uh, given any indication as to whether they will take ownership of it, but yes, our, our, our sailors have done extremely well and uh, they have uh, arrested those illegal fishing vessels and they are now in, in, in Alotau uh, and let the provincial uh, uh, authorities uh, take care of them and then they will continue to sail uh, into uh, uh, the, the base back in, in, in Lombrum. And we, when we come back, we'll have Christmas stories. Stay with us. Welcome back to National MTV News. Christians around the world must take a moment to pause and reflect on the gift of Christmas. This was the take-home message from Richard Babo, a local who resides at Sogeri in the central province. He says that Christmas is the greatest gift of all. Our crew traveled to the mountains of central province to see how others are celebrating Christmas away from the city. While Christmas for those living in Sugeri may not be the same with those living in towns and cities because of not so much celebration, many families are traveling to their homes to be with their loved ones for this festivity. And Mr. Babo says that Christmas must be a reflection day for all based on its essence. It's the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the beginning of one's life journey with God. Christmas for me and my son, and born day of Jesus Christ. Mama Maria Karimemna, and come up with ground. I should come up with some, and one plan, chosen beginning with God, and put him on ground. Christmas is not about entertainment, but a family day of unity. For them, I wish them Merry Christmas, um, um, be strong, stand firm, and then a big man and move on. Life and still go ahead. They also passed the Christmas messages. Greetings to all our, our families. Now one talks around the, inside our city, we go out the country, one one province. So Merry Christmas to my family in Pomosby, Waigani, my children here. Fabian Hucklitz, National MTV News. Children at the Port Moresby General Hospital's cancer ward were in full smile when they received their Christmas gifts. It was a joyful act thanks to NCD Governor Poes Pakop who donated gifts which brought hope to the children. There is no greater medication than love. This was shown by the pediatric ward staff of Port Mosby General Hospital. Every year the ward staff celebrates Christmas without the patients, but this year they thought it was better they include their patients as well. Uh, one time all patients blow me blood. By looking all around the ward, me play no celebrate one time all uh, uh, patient. Uh, me play get party, patient, and um, all can contribute to all uh, present from other old body men only come give him present as all. But this type of arrangement and first of its kind, we are working low here. The act showed the sort of relation the health workers have with their patients. They are more than just patients, they've become a family. 
we are together here to celebrate Christmas together as a family. This is very nice. We are emotional about it. Yeah. And we are thankful to save you. With the food, the children were so happy with the gifts they received. There were more than 20 gifts donated by the NCD governor. <laughs> Representing all the children and parents, Emmanuel expressed how they felt about the surprise. Especially, we were quite surprised. Uh, this wasn't expected. Uh, you know, it's a public general ward and uh, we thought this was going to be a quiet Christmas for us, spending it here in the hospital. A lot of the kids here, they have like serious, uh, they have cancer and uh, it's been not a good year for a lot of the kids and the parents. So this little gesture that was shown, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Gaile Kivali, National MTV News. Lace resident judge Justice Don Sawong is calling on the people of Morbe not to commit crimes or cause disturbances in the community during the first festive season. He said Christmas must be celebrated with its true spirit and a dis different perspective. These remarks were made following the increase of serious crimes in Morbe province. For this Christmas, Justice Sawong is urging people of Morobe to look at it from a different point of view. He added this time of the year is not about celebrating with unlawful activities, but it is about peace and unity with our family and friends. We need to look at this Christmas with some different meanings. Not, it's not about celebrations with... Um, with uh, unlawful activities. Morobe Governor Kelly Naru also extended his Christmas wishes to the people of Morobe and encouraged them to celebrate in the true spirit of Christmas so that the spirit of goodwill may prevail throughout the province. And in the true Christian tradition and fashion, uh, let the joy, peace and uh, spirit of goodwill Meanwhile, lay police will be out in full force during the Christmas Eve to make sure there are no major disturbances. During the start of Christmas and New Year police operations on Wednesday, lay Metropolitan Commander Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. said police will deal with those who intend to cause problems. Wagambi also encouraged the people of lay to celebrate peacefully and not to get into trouble. Mata Luis, National and TV News, Lay. And True Guy Sports is next. Details after the break. Welcome back to National MTV News. Christians around the world must take a moment to pause and reflect on the gift of Christmas. This was the take-home message from Richard Babo, a local who resides at Sogeri in the central province. He says that Christmas is the greatest gift of all. A crew traveled to the mountains of central province to see how others are celebrating Christmas away from the city. While Christmas for those living in Sugeri may not be the same with those living in towns and cities because of not so much celebration, many families are traveling to their homes to be with their loved ones for this festivity. And Mr. Babo says that Christmas must be a reflection day for all based on its essence. It's the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ and the beginning of one's life journey with God. Blo Christmas lo mi em masen em bon day blo Jesus Christ. Mama Maria Karimem na em kama pro ground. Sen kama pro sen em on pla chosen beginning blo God. Em put him lo ground. Christmas is not about entertainment but a family day of unity. For them, I wish them Merry Christmas. Um, um, be strong, stand firm, and then a big man and move on. Life and still go ahead. They also passed the Christmas messages. Greetings to all, all families. 
uh, one talks round law. Inside law city, you go out to country. One one province. So Merry Christmas to my family in Pomosby, Waigani. My children here. Fabian Hucklitz, National MTV News. Children at the Port Moresby General Hospital's cancer ward were in full smile when they received their Christmas gifts. It was a joyful act thanks to NCD Governor Poes Pakop who donated gifts which brought hope to the children. There is no greater medication than love. This was shown by the pediatric ward staff of Port Moresby General Hospital. Every year, the ward staff celebrates Christmas without the patients, but this year they thought it was better they include their patients as well. Uh, one time all patients blew me blood. By looking all around the ward, me play no celebrate one time all uh, uh, patients. Uh, me play get party, patient, and um, all come contribute all uh, present from other all body men, only come give them present as all. But this type of arrangement and first of its kind, me play working law here. The act showed the sort of relation the health workers have with their patients. They are more than just patients, they've become a family. We are all together here to celebrate Christmas together as a family. This is very nice. We are emotional about it. Yeah. And we are thankful to save you. With the food, the children were so happy with the gifts they received. There were more than 20 gifts donated by the NCD governor. <laughs> Representing all the children and parents, Emmanuel expressed how they felt about the surprise. Firstly, we were quite surprised. Uh, this wasn't expected. Uh, you know, it's a public general ward and... Uh, we thought this was going to be a quiet Christmas for us, spending it here in the hospital. A lot of the kids here, they have like, serious, uh, they have cancer and uh, it's been not a good year for a lot of the kids and the parents. So this little gesture that was shown, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Gaile Kivali, National MTV News. Lay's resident judge, Justice Don Sawong, is calling on the people of Morbe not to commit crimes or cause disturbances in the community during the first festive season. He said Christmas must be celebrated with its true spirit and a dis different perspective. These remarks were made following the increase of serious crimes in Morbe province. For this Christmas, Justice Sawong is urging people of Morobe to look at it from a different point of view. He added this time of the year is not about celebrating with unlawful activities, but it is about peace and unity with our family and friends. We need to look at this Christmas with some different meanings. Not, it's not about celebrations with... Um, with uh, unlawful activities. Morobe Governor Kelly Naru also extended his Christmas wishes to the people of Morobe and encouraged them to celebrate in the true spirit of Christmas so that the spirit of goodwill may prevail throughout the province. And in the true Christian tradition and fashion, uh, let the joy, peace and uh, spirit of goodwill. Meanwhile, lay police will be out in full force during the Christmas Eve to make sure there are no major disturbances. During the start of Christmas and New Year police operations on Wednesday, lay Metropolitan Commander Chief Superintendent Anthony Wagambi Jr. said police will deal with those who intend to cause problems. Wagambi also encouraged the people of lay to celebrate peacefully and not to get into trouble. Mata Luis, National MTV News, Lay. And True Guy Sports is next. Details after the break. True Guy Sports. Welcome to True Guys Sports. 
If you want to see more teams play in the World Cup, why restrict the number of World Cup teams? This question was raised by the International Cricket Council Chief Executive David Richardson during the recent Asian Cricket Council Conference in Sri Lanka. Diniros Raiko reports. With the ICC World Cup coming up in 2019, Richardson raised this question following critics regarding the cut of 14 participating nations to 10. This would mean that no associate nation would have a shot at the pinnacle of cricket come 2019. Though being one of the top four in the ICC World Cricket League, the PNG Habobar Mandis will have one shot at entry, but they will have to overcome West Indies, Afghanistan, Zimbabwe, Ireland, Netherlands, Hong Kong and Scotland in order to do so. Richardson added the very act of reducing the World Cup sports alone has already contradicted ICC's aim to promote the game and expand the number of teams playing at the top level. Though not all members of the International Cricket Council were convinced, Richardson's remarks were genuine. For the PNG side, this change poses new threats as the likes of West Indies and Afghanistan enters PNG's circle of play. Next year, we'll see the Baramandis take the play up a notch in order to make a break in the 2018 World Cup qualifiers. Dini Rose Raiko, National MTV Sports. With over 10 years' experience of kickboxing, Nelson Sampson of Mendy, Southern Highlands, is now seeking assistance from private and public sectors to further his career. Sampson, who started out in 2005, is now in Port Moresby conducting tournaments for young people interested in the sport of kickboxing. Godwin Eki reports. Sampson, who now lives in Port Moresby, has been a kickboxer for a decade and is now looking for means to boost his career. He has been running tournaments and exposing his skills. The tournament now I'm hosting here, um, it's like marketing myself to the business houses and uh, at the same time to the MPs members that I'm promoting myself to, I, can, I need a support, I need a sponsor to excel my talent in overseas. I've got a talent that with, with me, my rocket in fighting, I'm a hand defeated in, I only give knockouts, 12 fights, knockouts only. So I really need a support from a business house to support me and fight, let me fight overseas. He says his passion for kickboxing will continue until he achieves his dream, which is to represent the country overseas and to gain international exposure. He has been undefeated in his campaign, ending up with knockouts. So far, his 12 fights have ended. With PNG Games less than three months away, Samson is also helping prepare three different provinces, NCD, Gulf and Central, in getting their athletes ready by using the tournament to select potential fighters to represent their province respectively. Uh, this tournament I'm hosting it uh, mainly for the PNG game next year. Next year that will be a selection for Team NCDC, Team Central and Team Gulf. The three provinces are really really needing team uh, PNC kickboxing team so we are we are I'm hosting this tournament I've, I've been talking with the sports committee of these th the three provinces so I'm looking forward to select the best fighters out of this tournament to represent the, the pr respective provinces in the PNC game coming Godwin Eki, National MTV Sports and that ends True Guys Sports. The weather is next. And before we go, Christmas entertainment in the skies. Stay tuned. True Kai Sports. Sports. The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. With doing with Dulux. Taking a look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region, showers expected in Port Moresby, Daru and Kerama, and it's mostly fine for Alotau and Popendetta. In the Mamasa region, lay expecting cloudy and a shower or two. Medang, mostly fine and a shower or two expected in Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands, it's fine in Lorengau, mostly fine in Kavian, Kokopo, Rabaul and Kimbe, and a shower or two expected in Buka. And in the Highlands region, a shower or two expected in all centres.
The weather details are proudly brought to you by Dulux Weather Shield. Worth doing with Dulux. And before we go, passengers on board PNG Air's flight have thanked the airline company for introducing a new way of entertaining passengers. MTV's Vocal Fusion contestants have been on several flights entertaining passengers in mid-air. Passengers said it's a great way of bringing the spirit of Christmas to customers. Singing stars from MTV's Vocal Fusion program, like Peter Holyong, has been entertaining passengers in PNGS only selected flights. Immediately after the seatbelt signs were switched off, the entertainment for passengers started. They have been singing some hit songs, both local and international, including Christmas carols. Even the flight crews enjoyed singing along with them. They finish singing when the plane is about to land and the seatbelt sign go on. This initiative has so far been enjoyed by passengers who said it's the first of its kind. It's a change for in-flight entertainment. PNG Air Chief Commercial Officer Paul Abbott said the in-flight entertainment is on time with the festive season. Passengers will be treated to live entertainment provided by various stars from MTV's Vocal Fusion. Fabian Hucklitz, National MTV News. And that's how we end the news on this Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas to you all. Good night.